boy. Sparkling ice cold Coca Cola. Oh boy, that tastes good. Have you been to the refreshment counter? Remember, your favorite snack will taste especially good with world famous ice cold Coca Cola. The show starts in seven minutes. With mustard and relish, you'll guarantee mouth-watering satisfaction. Mmm! And now he ships his costume on a beautiful golden bun. There's his cue break, break. to go out on stage. He's the natural. He's the rage. Meet this person that I see at our refreshment counter. Greet the family. Thing different for a change? Then try the perfect refreshment, Chili Dilly, a delicious pickle treat that's spiced just right for every bite. Economical, too. There's no waste. You eat every bit of the juicy goodness of Chili Dilly. How about trying one right now? Chili Dilly, on sale at our concession stand. You'll love them. show starts in six minutes. And now, intermission. Refreshment time. Ah, uh, hello there. Give the demonstration of my new invention, the goodies machine. The machine turns out delumptious hot doggies one after the other. And thrice quenching sodas also. Gives popcorn of the most tasty kind, plain and buttered. Candy too, crunchy and dandy. Steaming hot coffee and ice cream too. These goodies are at a snack bar just waiting for you. Mmm. Here's a new taste treat. The corn dog. Plump, juicy wieners are dipped in a thick, golden southern-style corn batter that seals in all their freshness and flavor. If you like hot dogs, you love corn dogs. Everybody does. Try a corn dog with your favorite beverage at the refreshment corner now. Corn dogs. Folks, folks, I'm sorry. This I got to break in. I got to do it. 
It's like a sign from the gods. I, I, I'm sorry. Bam. I'm a hot dog. Bam. I'm a hot dog. Bam. I'm a hot dog. Look at me. Look at me. Bam. I'm a hot dog. Bam. I'm a hot dog. Bam. I'm a hot dog. Look at me. 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 get that out of the way all right folks let's change the situation here we got grease drop with us tonight grease drop coming in greasy coming in slick spoon from, stuck to the middle of my titty from the side all right. i was watching some shanty earlier uh let's get back to business here so we're gonna pick it up where we left off last time no fancy intro no, nothing like that let me change the banner we are live streaming streaming we are official we're live we're going to uh, pick up some of these tapes here. Uh, yeah, let's just hide that bad boy right there. All right, so, uh, yeah, you had cut out early last time, and you didn't hear there was a few familiar voices that joined Von Helton. We're going to skim it. I was just telling Grease Drop, actually, uh, at once we finish this video, there's like another seven hours of footage. There's like another seven hours of Just footage. in case you thought we were nearing the end, oh, no. Mm. Thank you, Wilson. Bam. Hot, juicy wieners. That was, uh, speaking of hot, juicy wieners, uh, they were tri literally tripping over themselves in that stream we covered last night with Ms. Parker and uh, the boys. <laughs> it was a veritable sausage fest, and they were pretty ha they were pretty happy about it. Yeah, I didn't hear uh, too many complaints anyways. Well, so they would I complain only to, only to fall back in love seconds later, which was, right. made it so much more interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's like they hated themselves. That's you know, right. <laughs> I hate myself for loving you. But uh, anyways, moving forward, uh, I don't know. Hey, Troll, <laughs> I don't have to answer your fucking question. Because I know, A, that you're one of my trolls. And B, you're, it's a stupid question anyway that I've already answered. You have so that's just setting the tone, if you all had to remember what mood Von Helton was in. He was but just always so pissy back then. Even when he was happy, he was mad. I don't remember exactly where we left off, so I'm just going to hit a random spot up in here, and uh, we'll see what this has to offer. I'm not; I have no idea what the last hour contains in this. Uh, if we have enough time, we'll move on to the next one and try to put a dent in that seven hours we got left to cover, folks. Fire it but up! Let's do it. Oh, hey! I almost fucking forgot, Doctor Descent. You got an apology coming to me, ain't you? The fact that I ended up being right about that rogue uh, blue planet up there, don't you have a don't you have an apology coming to me? I want to park out uh, there. Yeah, yeah. Turns I out thought I thought you were going to park there. Hovon ended up being right about that rogue blue planet up there, Doctor Descent. So let's have. I was right about the <laughs> That's right. I was right. You know, anytime. <laughs> Anytime, Dr. Descent. I'm waiting. I don't know who this fucking brain dead yeah. monkey on the fucking mic is. I can't remember. I'm trying to figure it out, too. I yeah, I want to say it sounds familiar, but I, it's just brutal. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. So, uh, But they don't talk too long, I don't think, or they get their mic situ situation all figured out. Have that apology. I ended up being right, motherfucker. How about that apology? Let's Let's have it. Wait, are you talking about the one that's a hundred light years away? Yeah, it's a hundred light years away. It's also seven times the size of Jupiter, dude. It's fucking huge. Okay. So Can you have a picture of it? So we have, have to we have to be realistic. If it were moving toward us at the speed of light, it would take a hundred years to get here. That's not the point. That's not the fucking point. The point is the son of a bitch is up there. And I was right. That's the point. So that's Polly talking. And uh, I think the person trying to get their mic to work that's overloading, well, one of them is Dr. Descent, I think, trying to get in on this conversation. But uh, for context, 
for people that weren't around, Von Helm was claiming that literally parked next to Earth was a blue planet coming through our solar system. Right off our port bow. So he found an article that talked about a possible planet 100 light years away. And he's trying to say, take this as a victory, right? I was right, number I remember this. I remember three. I remember this, uh, this the, the Blue Planet saga. It was, uh, he was convinced that it was in our solar system. Yeah. I mean, I don't under, I mean, the gravitational implications of that. I mean, you know, it was right we, up there. It's parked right up there. He'd always point over his shoulder. It's right up there. Right. It's right there coming through. So, the water yeah. planet. So, he found this uh, article where a possible planet exists. 100 million light years away, and uh, he t he's taking that as a win. We live in an infinite universe. There is an infinite number of possibilities. I can say that there's a purple star out there, and we're going to find one one day. Well, yeah, maybe you would, but you don't. This have universe probably has a planet that's going to shave my ass. <laughs> that's a good topic, though. I mean, why don't we shave little boys' asses when they're fucking born? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now that we got rid of the noisemaker, let me try this again. I had a Chinese video that showed the object. I had NASA's Soho and Stereo's uh, cameras that showed allegedly the object. And so, and so, yes, I have been vehement from day one that there was a rogue blue planet up there, and I was proven right. Okay. We Everybody have to jumping disagree. on my We head. have no visuals Everybody. of it. We haven't seen it with a camera yet. We have we have the Chinese video. The Chinese are not prone to fantasy. Their video clearly shows a very unfanciful object. Chinese. Okay. <clears throat> that everybody and their brother was sitting there saying, "Oh, it's a it's a folks, you know you can trust trust uh Chinese intelligence. Always. Always. Especially especially from Von Helton. That's another thing. Wasn't he going on in his newest video about fucking the Chinese landing out in his yard like Red Dawn? You know, I saw a piece of that, and I think uh, I think Biblical Beast pointed out that it was a perfect landing spot for all his Vietnamese girlfriends to land. Mm, but not Candace, because apparently he dropped that bomb. <laughs> right. Well, Candace they don't fly to him, Malaysia. That told him how it was. <laughs> if you didn't catch that, I, folks, uh, it was another heartbreaking incident. Only this time, actually, Vaughn doesn't even really have feelings for women anymore. He doesn't actually think, like, oh, I have to get to know them and actually, like, fall in love with them. It's just, like, as soon as he meets them, like, are you moving down? Are you moving down? We'll worry about the falling in love and all that stuff later. Just move in. So he I'm didn't seem really tore here. up. But apparently she told him how it was the other day that she had no, absolutely zero interest in him and uh, thought it, he was a horrible father and it was his fault and not trolls. And that, <laughs> that was probably the only part where it looked like his heart twisted a little bit when he had to admit that part. But anyways. Poor Vaughn. Out on the limbs. It's, it's, a, it's a smudge on the emulsion. It's swamp gas, Vaughn. No, damn it. It was a blue planet. I was right. And we did catch it, luckily, on camera one time. Uh, probably never do it again, but we got lucky. Because there is other planets and other shit in the way. But, you know, I ended up being right. I ended up being right. The trolls were wrong. Big the differ. Right. There's not a single image of this planet. The only way that we have seen it is through radiological telescopes. That's radio signals. Well, anyway, the point is that I ended up being right. That's all that matters to me. I don't give a fuck about the circumstances. I was right. The trolls were wrong. Period. End of story. You got a link to that, Vaughn? I want to check out the Blue Point Planet. Do what, Pam? Have I got a, a same? Oh, hey, uh, yeah. My, did you catch yeah. that? Did he just call Mouse Pam? I know she's in there. You can, as always, her mouth, her microphone sucks. But Pam, uh, Pam is in there, probably pregnant and probably drinking. Oh, Pam, that Pam. I thought he called Mouse. I thought that was Mouse talking. No. He called her Pam, his ex-wife's name. No, 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 no. Oh, uh, this is Pam, evil princess. Kiwi Pam. Pam. Yeah. The first heartbreak. Okay. That's right. That's right. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Right. All right. Somebody on blog is saying, is it a planet or a star? Okay, as far as we know right now, it is a plan is a planet. They are alleged they're alleging that it is a gas giant, but they're not certain. 
but it's big. It's like I said, it's it's anywhere from four to seven times the size of Jupiter, which means it's just it's just a fucking massive planet. Uh, but is it a gas giant or an actual solid planet? They're saying right now that as far as they know, it's a gas giant, but they don't fully uh, have that confirmed yet. So it could be anything. I'm uh, I'm actually unfamiliar with what uh, you're talking about. You said a Chinese telescope took a picture of a planet? Yeah, I mean, how the hell does a telescope pick up a fucking radio wave picture? The Chinese, the Chinese filmed... The Chinese threw a, ca a rocket up into space. All right, it, it was it was the, the Chinese put a rocket up into space with uh, you know with apparently very powerful cameras on it. And while it was up there, it had a little blue object, a little blue orb, you know. And uh, you know, and for the longest time, oh, it's just a water droplet on on the lens. So apparently the Chinese throw rockets up with ultra powerful cameras that can take real time photos a hundred million or a hundred years well, away. Well, yeah. Okay. Everybody knows that. And oh no, it's a lens flare. It's this. It's that. It's the other thing. And I kept maintaining from day one that it was a blue planet, a rogue blue planet. I've stated that from day one, and I ended up being right. No. Well, I, I like I said, I don't. I don't it's not a rogue planet. It's in its own solar system, 100 million light years away. It was <laughs> Good old Vaughn. Good old Vaughn. Now, do you recognize that voice talking right now? I do not. I do, I play it again. Yeah. I don't know. The, uh, <laughs> it's Johan yeah. point zero. Yeah. You say it was a Chinese rocket that had a camera on it that actually saw this. Pla it, the reason I ask is because there's a discrepancy in the. You say it's a hundred. Someone said it was a hundred light. Years away, I don't. I don't have any way to confirm this, but is that true? Well, that is one. That is one theory that's going around. Is that it's a hundred light years away? I don't know how I, many light years. I guess away. what I was. What I would say to that, if it is a hundred light years away, I, I would find it difficult to believe a camera lens could pick it up. But I don't know. I don't know the. Uh, the case. Well, I don't. I don't be hundred light years, years away if it's a damn water droplet. I don't think it's a hundred light years away. Okay, personally, I think it's a lot closer than that. But they're probably saying a hundred light. It, okay, a, a lot of times, and this <laughs> they're just saying a hundred light years. You a know, lot of times, inaccurate. they will put out fake information because, in their right. mind, they don't want to panic the public. Okay, and so they will deliberately lie. Okay, if something is is like two light years away, they'll say it's a hundred light years away because they don't want people panicking. They don't put, want people to get distressed. Yeah, but two light years away is still like thousands of years. Uh, not, not if it's traveling at a high rate of speed, which it is. According to, according to their own uh, uh, documents, it is traveling at something like 170,000 miles an hour or some shit like that. Just incredible. So the speed they're projecting right now is at 23,000 kilometers per hour. And at 23,000 kilometers per hour, it would be like making a trip back and forth to the moon 10 billion times. So, yeah, I'd like to point that out. There's no way that a planet, on one hand, that's X number the size of Jupiter, is going to move even close to the speed of a proton of right. light. Right. <laughs> It's just hurtling through space well, at near light speed. We just heard that the Chinese are definitely not, you know, susceptible to flights of fancy. Now, all of a sudden, they're lying about how far it is because they don't want to upset anyone. Right, right. They're sparing us. But the point I'm getting at is that if it's 800 degrees Fahrenheit, allegedly, in this, in this planet's well, atmosphere. How is it water if it's that hot? It would be traveling a hell of a lot faster than that. Because you'd have to have friction what? in order to create what? heat. Because it has no sun of its own. Ergo, the inner workings of the if it's a gas giant, the inner workings of the planet could actually be what's causing the high temperatures. Yeah, and if you can see with a camera, it obviously has some sunlight reflecting off of it, right? Well, and that and see, that's another thing that I brought up about the video. Where's the second light source coming from, guys? Come on, help me out here. You know, because you can see the sun in the in the in the video. So where's that second light source coming from? What's up with that? 
you know. I thought it was an interesting Seeing a sun video. dog in that video. Oh, sun dog. I wish y'all had <laughs> sun dog shoved up your ass. I'm just thinking of that excuse that makes me want to vomit. Sun dogs is akin to fucking swamp gas. When you can't explain something, oh, it must be a sun dog. You know, I'm so sick of that shit. I really am. It's, it's like swamp gas. Could be, could be the reflection off the tip of my penis, Vaughn. You never know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it was, yeah, the, the reflection off the tip of your penis is probably more logical. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's so fucking ridiculous. Oh, it's got to be a lens flare, Vaughn. It's got to be a drop, water droplet on the lens, Vaughn. No, it does not. And I ended up being right. I said it was a blue planet. I said it was a rogue planet. And I ended up being right. Again, we have no imagery of this planet 100 light years away. Again, it's not 100 light years away. They're just saying that. And I will get you a link. Hang on, Confidential. I'll get you a link to the video. I'm not asking for a link, Vaughn. You asked for a second light source. And um, I wanted to point out the fact that that scientists have also told us that each and every one of these stars that we see in our area or in our planet system, stars that we look at in the sky are millions of n other suns. Therefore, that blue planet could be passing a star in a good way. So there could be an answer to your second light source. And, and, and well, another possibility, which is the one I tend to lean towards, is the fact that 90% of the solar systems in our galaxy are binary star systems, meaning two suns, okay? And, and it is highly possible that uh, we might actually have a binary system, but nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody wants to be on the down low for some reason. I don't know. Well, we, the pure fact that, that we haven't traveled that far into space really leads it all to guessing and really Wait. more so hypothesis until we can actually... Wait a minute. So the Chinese can take a picture of a blue pr planet and prove him right 100 million light years away. All right, I keep saying like 100 million, 100 light years away. But we can't tell if we're in a binary star system. I mean, look, look, there's a lot of claims being made, and I just want to make an make an apology beforehand. I have no recollection of this at all, but I'm I'm absolutely certain I say some wild ass shit. So don't, <laughs> so don't hold me to it. I'm just pointing that out. All right, let's get ships and vessels that can actually go farther and deeper into space, to where we can voyage on and see other parts of the universe without dying. Well, the way that uh, the current way scientists and uh, astronomers are able to detect foreign bodies in our solar system is perturbations on other planets' orbits, meaning that if a, an orbit of significant size were it didn't even have to, it doesn't even have to be necessarily inside the orbit of our of any of our planets in our solar system, it would cause the gravitational orbits to be perturbed. And that's how they, meaning they can actually See, no, a planet is there, or a a mass is there without even seeing it. But I would have to take. I don't. I don't know the particular case. But if it was a camera, I would on a on a rocket. I would say that there. It, I I don't know how it, be, it would be possible that it filmed it with just a camera. If it if it is a hundred light years away, that being the the big point, it 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 would have to be much closer in my you know in my uneducated opinion. Like I said, like I said, they have in the past deliberately lied in their opinion now in order to prevent uh, mass panic, in order to prevent, uh, you know, people from, you know, killing themselves and all this good shit. You know, it, the thing of it is, if it's closer, <laughs> objects in mirror are closer than they appear. You know, if, it, if it's closer than they say it is. You know, their thinking is is that it might cause a mass panic, and so therefore they're saying, oh, don't worry, folks, it's hundreds of light years away. It doesn't pose any threat to us at all, when the reality is is that it's probably a lot closer. They just don't want to tell us. Okay. That's yeah, but we keep saying, Vaughn, I mean, even if it's only two light years away, it's, it's still thousands of years away. The point is, though, is that this thing is massive. Okay. It's easily seen. Okay. We've got it. Like I said, if the Chinese captured this on camera, 
then it's obviously a lot closer than what they're saying, isn't it? Yeah. It has well, that would also I, I think you didn't capture anything. There are thousands and hundreds of thousands of telescopes. I, I use a telescope daily. There's nothing out there. I would also say that that uh, as far as uh, the orbital patterns of other planets, so far they have not been perturbed, meaning if there were something closing in on our solar system, it has not gotten close enough to cause any perturbations as you know so far actually mega mike that is false because <laughs> uh, i was just reading just the other day where there have indeed been perturbations going on within our solar system and uh they are at a loss to explain it um you know the, well, that would that, that would be news to me i would i would uh I've, I've space.com that. That. space.com space.com space. space. You got to think about the time difference and everything. Right. Right. Um, is the world spinning or is that correct? You got to think about that. This is now, a drunk Pam back still, there. Okay. You got to take into account how many bottles of wine I've drank. That's right. Listen, I know I'm pregnant, but I'm I'm halfway through my six pack here, and I've really been thinking about it. And I like to party. That's but, right. And uh, you got to take into account the time difference, folks. Time that's difference. right. That's right. She's time on the other side of the planet. Time zones. I don't know. I have no explanation for that. But uh, but you're correct. I'm, I, I'm at the time of the world. I have to every single life of every single day. Why is none of them hitting me? Well, that's a, be hitting me before I hit you guys. Well, that, that, that's a good point. Um, the Vatican uh, built their telescope in in South Pole uh, sp specifically for that purpose is because they were able to see better. <clears throat> According to them, they would be able to see the stars better than at the North Pole. Uh, I don't know what the difference is, but that's what they said. So that's what um, I'm going to go with. The Vatican has a telescope on the South Pole? Well, I know, I know that, like I said, the Vatican built their telescope down in the South Pole. There's been a lot of other telescopes built in the South. Uh, there was somebody from South America that was claiming they could easily see another planet uh, behind the sun. And that, uh, you know, that if you tried to see it in North America, you wouldn't be able to see it at all because of the... Um, you know the the association with the you know the where they were located on earth and all that good shit you know is it true i don't know but i'm just going by what this person was saying you know south yeah, america well, unless they had like a telescope that was able to see it then yeah okay but they didn't Everybody throws up to me. Oh well, Vaughn, there's all these amateur astronomers and all these, all these uh, observatories, you know. Well, where the fuck were they when Common Element was coming through? Hello. Yeah. You know. I mean, we should have had. We should have had. We must have been somewhere, Vaughn. How'd you hear about it? You don't have a telescope, do you? Yeah. <laughs> so I just looked this up as well as other people in the chat. So the Vatican does, in fact, have a telescope. I knew they did have a telescope, but it's located in Arizona. What's the name so, of that telescope by, by, any, by any chance? It is called the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope. Nice. I thought it was named Lucifer, but what do well, I Well, that comes up on the Google search. <laughs> things too. But that's the actual name of it, apparently, and it's located in Arizona. Well, so, not they, Arizona South Pole, just so we're clear. Right. <laughs> yeah, Santa Fe uh, South Pole. But the reason they're at the South Pole is because that's the entrance of the hollow Earth. 
Well, yeah. And, well, it was on top right. of Hitler's house. I thought it was really it, 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 right. Well, Admiral Byrd proved this in the forties. Everyone knows this. This is ah, uh, yeah, that's right. True. It's old stuff. Right. Not the point. The point is, we should have had nice, beautiful, clear shots of common elements. We didn't have any. Well, why not? I have nice, clear, clear shots. Sure. Vaughn, I'll yeah, send you a link. Hold on. Let me get you a link. Yeah, nice, clear links. My ass. Bullshit. I looked all over. The- I do. I took pictures. I uh, I also just uh, tried to find the Vatican's um, telescope. Uh, the only result I'm getting is one in Arizona. If you would have just waited, nerds, yeah, I had I've it handled. Yeah, I've got a telescope, Vaughn. I'm going to send you some photos I took. Hold on. Yeah, I don't. Maybe, yeah, you must. I don't know about that one. All right, hang on. Y'all need to learn how to use Google Maps. Can't beat my telescope. Google Map is fun, but they don't update it enough there, Vaughn. Sorry to tell you. I didn't know you had a telescope, Paul. That, that, that be, that's interesting to know. We're going to have to have a little, a little competition here. They have a satellite. Yeah, whatever. They have a satellite that shows you Google Earth, but I, I really doubt that they got stars. I'll, I'll tell you what I wish. What I wish is that every time I had to Google something for somebody, that they'd pay me a thousand dollars. That's what I wish. Now that took me what? what? A minute or two at tops. A minute or two. Well, never yeah. mind that we just googled that there was no telescope in the South Pole. That gets not really a good steady source because of the fact it can be altered by people and anyone that in the world just wants to fucks with it. I guess where the uh, confusion comes. All right, Vaughn, I'm gonna I'm gonna post the link in your room. Is it okay if I post the link? I have some some stuff from Common Ellen in for you. All right, Vaughn, you're allowed. As long as it's from Common Ellen and and not a porn site or some shit. No, that's that's honest to God. That's legit. That's Common Ellen and Radio Telescope Array. If anybody would have a comment porn on the hard drive, it'd be Dr. D. Right. Open the cell phone. The one, uh, the one I'm getting here is uh, it's a twelve. It's twelve universities from North America that actually own that telescope. Maybe that's where that confusion was coming. It's a legitimate link, Vaughn. I wouldn't. I wouldn't trick you. On a different note, though, I would say that at Mount Graham, where the Vatican's telescope is located. Apparently, there is a telescope named Lucifer. Nice. <laughs> yeah, what do you make of that? that? That came off the, the SETI, SETI array from USC, formerly known as SETI. Well, that's okay. All right. That's Mark, 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 in, Mark, in, the, uh, Mark in, in blog TV was saying, what is the killer proof of Nibiru even existing? Dude, mainstream media, back in 1983, put out an article about Nibiru, Planet X, as it was called back then. They discussed it at great length. Well, actually, Planet X uh, was a separate alien conspiracy that they've kind of tried to post onto that. But that aside, I'd just like to point out, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, I love it how Vaughn is one of these like rogue journalists that tell you never to trust the mainstream media, except for when it backs up his stuff. Right. When he thinks it backs up him, <laughs> and all of a sudden it's like, even CNN reported on it. Well, that's so you know it's got to be good. Anything he talks about is 100% sourced by the me- mainstream media, right? Like, yeah, right. He's not out there independently fucking discovering shit. Right, right. <laughs> I just think it's funny, right? Don't listen to them, except for when they agree. He was like, even NASA, I got these pictures right from NASA. Never like, a straight answer. <laughs> they're, they're hiding it. They, they had pictures of it taken by a telescope, a, mag, a, a magnified telescope out in space, took pictures of the damn thing and everything. Okay, so you, you know, just said that the mainstream media was bad. Well, <laughs> that's the thing. Sometimes they lie. Sometimes they tell the truth. You got to figure out what they're doing. How do you know? I don't. Yeah. How do you know? How do you know? Do you know? I don't know. I'm guessing. Are you guessing? Yes. Do you, or do you believe? Do you actually believe everything somebody tells you? I hope not. I hope there's some discernment going on there. Yeah, there is, but I mean, I usually have a method in my madness. I usually have a bullshit detector needle. Go ahead. 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 Get him, Pam. And the media that jumps out in you and you pick it up. Right. That's one of the things, yes. But the thing of it is... That's what I'm saying is either you believe them or you don't. Either they're bad all the time or they're bad. No, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. 
that is such a crock of shit. So, so if CN, so if CNN says says it's going to be going to be purple outside tomorrow, I'm supposed to believe them? What a load of shit. Okay, and just because. I love. I love how Vaughn just I was trying to flip it and avoid the point they're trying to make. Right now, they're making the point that you're saying they're liars, Vaughn. So why would you use you are you are right now arguing the sources you're using are liars, and that's what they're trying to point out. But he's trying to flip it. What you believe everything the media says? It's like, well, no. When it comes to like <laughs> rogue blue planets going through our solar system <laughs> that's where and stuff, I draw probably the line, not. Yeah. yeah, right. Well, you know, and I remember too the comment Ellen and stuff because back in those days, Vaughn used to have an interview he did with some nutbag named Terrell Blackstar. And the Elenin was supposed to be the usher, the herald of Nibiru. Right, and the only right. safe place to live was in the Ozarks and all this shit. So right. some of this is coming back to me. I'm remembering it. As right, listening. Right. I'm not going to listen to everything CNN says. That's a load of shit. And you know it. Okay? Yes. But, I mean, come on, you're sitting here talking about a water droplet on the lens of the Chinese rocket camera. I mean, don't you think yeah, they check that shit? There, and don't yeah, you think the water droplet water evaporate? Yeah, well, if, it was, if it's a water droplet, why in the fuck didn't it smear? The rocket's going thousands of fucking miles an hour, dumbass. It would have smeared all over the fucking screen, and you damn well know it. Yeah, but it, it can't smear in space. There's nothing to smear against. There's nothing to smear against. Not this yeah, bullshit. There's no wind in space. It's a vacuum huh? again. We aren't going through this shit again, are we? It's not a vacuum. That's a load. Of, that's a load of bullshit too. You know, you got a fucking rocket going a hundred, at least a hundred thousand miles an hour, or whatever. You know, and but we're going to have a water droplet that stays perfectly still the whole fucking time. Bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah, I guess. What the, I I would say that. I don't know about the case again. I don't. I don't have. A, I don't have a clue. But I would say that. Uh, well, it looks like no perfectly still, according to Newton. I mean, when, you, when you're going 100 miles an hour in your car, it's not like you're fucking dissolving, swinging around in the seat or any of that shit. You're in motion with the car. <laughs> That's hey, I'm just screaming. Over you, Pam. So now you know who it is. Uh, it's okay. But look at look at the guy. Okay, he jumped from outer space. Huh? Hey, what's the lit? A droplet out of his freaking mouth. Where's it gonna go? What? Clearly, well, here you're really, really fine. Really fine. I'm having a hard time hearing you there, man. If you could turn up your volume. I'm trying to figure out how to increase the volume on on Skype, and I'm not. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to step on people, Vaughn. I mean, it wouldn't do that. I just can't hear. I don't see you talking. I see you're moving around. Uh, yeah, I apologize too, cool Kiwi chick. I think I was talking over you. I didn't. I couldn't hear you. I'm trying to figure out how to increase your audio. Hold on. Uh, James, she's actually in the cam with us. How about that, Pam? I, I, I'm really having a hard time hearing you. Yeah, I can't. I can't hear you, Pam. I'm sorry. If you could speak up. Let me let me try this, Pam. Let me mute you on Skype and try talking. Right click on the screen and on. click on settings. You turn your microphone up. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I can't hear you now, Vaughn. I can hear her, but I can't hear you. I, I can't hear you either, James. And now I can hear her, but I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Why not? I'm good, Pam. I, I, yeah, I can't hear a thing you're saying, Vaughn. He's turn muted. up your thing and turn hers down. Oh, wait a minute. I, now I can hear you scratching your head, but I can't hear her. I can hear either one of you right now. No, all I can hear is me. What the fuck? Uh, this, uh, Dr. Dissent, you're an asshole. I, can't, I can barely hear you, but I can hear him. Uh, you can hear me, brother. I know you can. I, I, I can barely hear you. Was that something about my foreskin? No, but in all seriousness, Vaughn, I can't. Whatever you did, I can't even hear you now, Vaughn. That's because it's pushed to talk, Doctor Descent. It's pushed to talk. And if I don't, push well, then who the hell are you talking to yourself? I see your mouth moving. I'm talking to Pam on Skype. Oh. Oh. Now I get it. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. I would just yeah you know, to further what we were talking about earlier. Um, as far I don't like, again I don't know the, the specifics of 
of the camera and the and the planet. Well, I, I'm trying to get you. I'm I'm going to try and get you the the video so that you can see the video for yourself. Right. I, I feel confident. I feel very confident that a water droplet is not going to stay stationary when the rocket is doing a hundred and some thousand miles an hour. There, that's what I was going to address. There is no wind. There is no. There's nothing like that. in space. Um, it sometimes is incorrect to call it a vacuum, but there are no sound. There are. No, there is no wind. There is no. No, but there is friction. There is friction. <laughs> Yeah, but friction's caused by other objects bouncing off of the object. I mean, exactly. what, what friction are you talking about? There's what, all what kinds I, of shit out there, man. There's gaseous clouds. There's planets. There's dust. There's rocks. There's all kinds of shit. With, space, with no gravity, there would be with no gravity in space. There would be nowhere. I mean, what they're saying is true. That if it, I don't know, but if as far as what, where, there's no gravity. There's no. There's nothing against the. You know. The water. So that's, that's right. what's happened in the past. Gravity is the reason not a I bring it up. Yeah, strange that's, enough. That's the reason I bring it up. I don't know of this case. Maybe it's clearly not a water droplet, but in the past, that's been like, that's been the case. You can right. And it, and I mean, pressure. come on, I drive down. Come on, Vaughn. I mean, we all, all drive down the road at like 90 miles an hour with a beer in our hands, right? I, I, you know, I usually pour a Dixie cup full of beer and go driving, and that motherfucker <laughs> is shooting out of the Dixie cup. Maybe it's so if it's not going to fucking if, if, if the liquid doesn't drink, shoot out my Dixie cup at 100 miles an hour and drive it down the road of deer, why would a drop of water come off the lens? Well, ask your question. Yes, ask your question, Pam. I'll try to crank you up. If they will be able to hear me. I hope they'll hear you. Go ahead. How long would it take? For a formation of mm, what shall I put? Have another drink, Pam. It'll come to you. An ice cool to form. How long would it take for an icicle to form in space? Is what she's saying. I would think that it would be getting the getting the hydrogen and the oxygen in the one place that would be the issue. For the person you are at, if you open the door on the space shuttle and you just urinate it out of your space, 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 one little droplet would probably freeze pretty quickly, but a bucket... Oh, do you know who that is? Is that killer? ...would probably take a little longer. Uh, I'm not sure who is it. That is our buddy. I forget his screen name. I know his real name, but I don't want to say it. He was the uh, Vaughn's buddy. The big fat guy that was a security guard. What was oh, his? Malone? Uh-huh. There you go. Yeah, who was the screen name? Eric. Okay. We're talking nanoseconds. If you want to play, you got to pay. And, you know, and again, (laughs) right, right. And again, just, just, you know, I've said this before, but I'll say it just, just again. None of us know what the fuck we're talking about, right? We're just fucking with Vaughn. Like, don't take anything we're saying seriously. We're just trying to gas him up and make him scream. Right. So you're talking like 200 and something degrees below zero. See, yet another reason to not have your foreskin removed. One more year in space. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, Pam. Uh, I, I wanted my thoughts to remove. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I wanted my thoughts to remove. Go ahead. You asked a question. I still can't hear you. Okay, you have to fix that. Yeah, I know. Pam, you just need to talk through stick cam, I guess. Let's go on ahead and crash the, 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 uh, the Skype and just talk through stick cam. Cause they're not, they're not, not, they're not hearing you. I don't know if you were talking, Ed Von. I saw you, I saw your mouth moving, but your volume's gone too. Stop trolling. Do what? He, he, he's right, sorta. Because on blog TV, I am losing my audio. My audio keeps cutting out, and I don't know why. Yeah, you're back again. I, I'm not trolling. I'm just trying to have a conversation here. I'm in and out over here too. I would also, uh, I just, 
day temperature in space is approximately minus 273 Celsius. So any any uh, any water would almost instantly freeze. <laughs> it technically, it wouldn't be instantaneous, but it would be pretty damn close. Okay, well then, why hasn't this water droplet turned to ice? I would say that it's, it, the high probability would be that it's not water that's on the lens. That would be my first guess. Um, so the thing, the thing I'm confused about, Vaughn, is as as much money as it costs to put a satellite in space, don't you think the Chinese fucking bastards, as incompetent as they are, would at least have checked the fucking lens on the goddamn camera for water droplets? Well, and that's a very good point. Uh, you know, those cameras would be cleansed. Uh, somebody would go around and make sure everything's nice and clean, I'm sure, before they launch the, the rocket. At least I would think they would. Dylan, who's the prime minister or the president? What? Yeah, John Key. John Key? Yes. Yeah, Is he like a liberal guy or a Republican kind of guy? Oh, fuck, I don't care about the government. So you don't have a clue, you just know it's John Key. I never vote for nobody. You serious? You don't vote. You don't vote. <laughs> Love you, Blog TV Canada. Maybe it was Blog TV Canada's nipple that was on the lens. You know what I mean? There you go. Hey, can you turn off your microphone? Well, yeah, can, 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 come on, Vaughn. You're going to have to fix your volume. I think it's very rude how you don't at least adjust your guest's volume in here. In here. I, she's no longer my guest. She's on stick ham. She's, got, she's in that box up there. Pam is a cool Kiwi chick. Pam, you're going to have to right click on the screen, go into settings, and turn your microphone up. Or just click the little tiny fucking gear. Yeah, just click that little gray gear and adjust your volume. Yeah, go to uh, that and Kitty adjust face. your volume. I don't remember. Emmy, Emmy Kitty Face, I talk to thousands, literally thousands of people on the Internet. Okay, don't get offended if I don't remember who you are. Okay, okay, because I, I, you know, considering all the people I talk to, you know, I, there's no way I can remember everybody. No way. I'm not the amazing Kreskin. Okay. Ben spoons with thought. Hey, hey, speaking of speaking of how amazing you are, Vaughn, are you still are you still participating in the Jedi Night Church or whatever? You still doing that thing? You still working on a lightsaber? I'm, still trying, I'm trying to get that shit to work, man. If I get it to work, don't worry. I'll be posting that shit to YouTube if I get it to work. Uh, the wife will remember know. because you're cheese obsessed. Okay. I think I know who you are now. The wife probably remember you. Hey, that makes me think. James, somebody told me that you guys were pregnant again. Is that right? No, that's wrong. She's wanting okay. to be pregnant okay. again. Well, good luck. Thank you. She's wanting three more. Holy fuck. Nah, that ain't a big thing. Six kids, that ain't shit. You know, you know how much, you know how many kids uh, uh, my mother's mother had? Twelve. How many did your yeah, mom have? Yeah, that's because on? we had to put back to work back then. I have five kids, and that's something. I have two, and I can't see how you fuckers can go above one. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on three, and I'm done with that. But you know what? It's a good thing we're having so many kids to fight those fucking Palestinians. That's right. Well, the average Muslim mm -hmm. family, and this is documented, by the way, the average Muslim family has five to eight children, guys. That's a fact. That's not my opinion. That's absolute fact. All right? And the average European and American family is having what? Zero to two children? Hmm. Doesn't take a rock scientist. Right, we need to have we need to have more fucking baby vampires and foreskins to take on this it fucking is, goddamn Palestinians. <laughs> Quit trolling me. It is a baby war. It is a legitimate baby war. It really, baby war. They and and I can show you a direct quote from uh, from the guy that they killed over in Libya, um, Muammar Gaddafi. I can show you an actual quote from Muammar Gaddafi. That states quite succinctly, he said it is not suicide bombers. He said it's not money, it's not weapons, it's not anything. It's about babies. Muammar Gaddafi said that out of his own mouth. He said, we will take Europe and America with babies, not with guns or suicide bombers. That was straight out of the mouth of Muammar Gaddafi. Of course, they killed Yeah, well, Muammar Gaddafi ended up getting...
hide behind a pickup truck, drug around a shot in the face five times on primetime television. So his advice is pretty fucking useless, isn't it? I mean, whatever. Well, yeah, but there's a lot of controversy about that too, isn't there? Well, I would argue that what what I find quite deceptive about the whole uh, suicide bombing is that when they catch these cabals, the leaders always seem to be very willing to be taken prisoner. It seems very strange to me that the leaders always seem to be captured. You would think if this was a widely held belief that they would be more willing to die for their cause, but that's just, you know, I know very little about the Arab countries personally. Well, the Arab countries speak perfect nerf church. And oh, wow, nice. Yes, I fucking hate them. I'm my Irish, that's by not- the way, James. Jesus. <laughs> nice. The bottom line is here's my advice. If you're going to run, don't hide in the drainage ditch. Don't hide in the drainage ditch pipe, and don't fucking hide in the drainage ditch pipe full of fucking people that don't like you. Well, my advice, you don't stand a chance. Greeks are so bad they got their own dance. That's right. Because when a bunch of guys with guns come knocking, you better start rocking. Well, I would say that if it was going to be that kind of party, I would stick my penis in the mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah, screw the apple pie. I bet you he had a foreskin. Didn't help. The foreskin was powerless to stop a shotgun blast to the face. Fuck that. My foreskin's goddamn bulletproof. That's a lie. I, will Bull- I call bullshit. Cam it up. Oh, bullshit. Yeah, it is bullshit. <laughs> hey, James. Yeah, so Vaughn, not to get too personal, uh, personal here. I mean, but but what do you think? Are, are you are you still fucking wearing the sheath, or did somebody have your fucking foreskin removed against your consent? Uh, no, I do not. I'm not. Uh, I don't have that. So. Hey James, I just want to say thanks, man. Thanks. Have a good night. I'm going to bed. All righty, dude. See ya. Thank y'all. Pam, do you ever eat? You look skinny as a fuck. You you look skinnier than a branch on a tree. Do you ever eat? Uh, yeah, I eat all the time, dude. I've had three kids and I cannot gain weight. I'm sorry that I don't have a fucking big ass and all the rest of that fucking big titty. Yeah, I can't hear you again there, cool kiwi twig. <laughs> Pam, you're... He, he, Pam, 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 he is correct. Uh, I hate to admit it, but he's correct. Your body I hate to too admit too it. Low. You got to click on that little gearbox up there above your name there, and uh, and and crank the uh, crank the audio up, man. When and where, Pammy? When and where? Meow. Could you ever be more of a creeper? That's a good song, man. That's a good song. <clears throat> the creeper is a song by uh, by uh, uh, Molly Hatchet. It's a good song. I like it. I'm more of a person for The Doors and their old song. Uh, I think it was Night something. Forgot what it was, but it was a pretty good song. Baby night, fever, night, fever. Oh, God. You know how Who is this guy? Who is this <laughs> yeah, fucking third no idea. wheel? Uh, no, it was something really weird. It, I like The Doors, period. John Morrison was a great... John Morrison. Jim Morrison, a, sorry. Yeah. Not John Morrison. Yeah. Jim. Jim was a good artistical Artistic. man. He's he's dead, Jim. But that's impossible. People are strange when you're a stranger. Faces look ugly when you're alone. <laughs> Women yeah, seem wicked. Mm-hmm. Women seem wicked. Alone, wicked. When you're unwanted. Vaughn's always got to outdo the net. You know what I mean? He, I always find it funny in these things. Like he'll constantly do these little, whatever his his little fucking quirk, where he's got to like everything reminds him of a line of a song and he sings it. But if someone else does it, he hates it. He hates it when other people <laughs> sing. And if he's if he starts something and someone joins in, he's got to finish it. It's got to be his thing. Got to be I, his. Yeah. It's someone oh, when uh, you're down, when you're strange. Someone was asking who the, you know, who the uh, crazy man with the deep voice was. It's not George Bush Pimps. That is the illustrious Dr. Descent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Dr. Descent. A.K.A. Biblical Beast. Right. 
No one remembers your name when you're strange. I have to read Faces right. come out of the rain. The rain. When, 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 when you're strange. When he's got to keep, he's got to keep he's, going. He's got to be the last strange. one. See, he's ending it now. So All right, can. yeah. Can't Sorry, you cannot school me on <laughs> indoors lyrics. I know them all. Sadly, I grew up in a '60s house, and my dad did play Woodstock. Sadly, so all of this shit just embedded in my brain. Yeah, Pam, your mic is still a little low, hon. Seriously, it is. Still low. Get the car out of your mouth and try to talk. <laughs> but it is low. Well, you remember she used to sit on the other side of the room. And her camera's on her, the mic and everything's on her laptop well, yeah, had, on the other she, side. <laughs> she That's what the problem is. She's on the other side of the goddamn living room. She drunk. had her cam girl. You know, she had to get all the angles for the cams. You know what I mean? Yeah. She used to do that all the time. It'd be like set up way up on something. And then she'd be like cross legged on the floor drinking wine. And you could barely hear her. Because, while pregnant, by the way. Well, yeah, while pregnant. So, yeah. I wonder if uh, maybe maybe it's in your window settings. Maybe your window settings is low or something. Okay, Emily, she is she is right here. Uh, how about now? Is that better? Maybe not. Yeah. That's completely better. That's got you now. What'd you do? I turned it on. She's fucking housed. She is fucking uh, lit. I'm to turn it off again, so I don't have to Yes, you. yes, Pam. Oh, it helps to have the microphone turned on when you want to talk, dear. <laughs> How do you turn around and keep it on, like, fucking all the time? I'm not used to this shit, dude. I'm not. So. I'm not on the cam. So now the volume is up, and she's still yelling like no one can hear her. And again, drunk. you're going to be enlightened to all the just absolutely pivotal things she's saying. Like she is a she's the cornerstone of the conversation. Like she has nothing but good input. Yeah. How the how fuck do you change it? Well, I've I've got it set to push to talk, and the reason I set it that way is because I didn't want feedback. Um, you know, not all rooms are set to push to talk. Some of them are set to uh, just ramble on. Uh, another Led Zeppelin reference, but um, in this particular situation, I've got it set to push the talk. Okay, so that's what I've got it too. Thank you. Awesome! Fuck the rest of you guys. Seriously. Did hey, Vaughn, is your wife having a seizure? No, she's just so terrified of you, she can't bear to look at you. What were you gonna say? <laughs> I was gonna say she I, she's just screaming. You know, what I mean? she's not even making any. It's unreal. Like, and Bond is just. This is back in the day too. He pined over her forever. Mm -hmm. He would. He did. He did things like I can't wait for you to come down here and visit me, Pam, so I could walk around town with you on my arm to show these old old country bumpkins what a real woman looks like. Says this right in front of his wife. By the way. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. Yeah, she was a real prize. She was. Okay. I, I was I was worried. She looked like she was passing out or something. I love you. I, know. I love you. Thank goodness she got that mic figured out. I'm trying to get her to get over there. I'm trying to get her to get over there and log in. I love it when uh, women with English accents are mad at you. That's just so sexy, that she, voice. She's from New Zealand, not from England. What the hell's wrong with you? The English accent, that type of accent, to me it sounds English. I'm I'm no world traveler. I've never even been out of the friggin' continental U.S. Hold on. Holy crap, Vaughn, that's so sweet. You know, I haven't seen a scene like that since Michael Jackson fucking got rid of Bubbles the Monkey. Well, that sucks because I got a low tolerance for giving bullshit, so, you know, I guess I'm never going to see him, man. <laughs> All right, I've got her in her chair. That still doesn't mean she's going to log in, but I got her in her chair. So any kids? You got the helmet the on helmet? too. Yeah, that's it. You know, it's like one of those. It's like that old adage: you can you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You know, one of those things. Very true. 
Very true. Yeah. Just like we could change pants on our mean. mic. Keep telling, I keep telling my wife to put on the helmet when she drops her head against the desk all the time, but she just doesn't listen. Just like we could teach like, Pam to our mic, but she will never eat. No. I think she's falling asleep again. <laughs> I think she's falling asleep again. She might have low blood sugar, Vaughn. You should give her a Reese's peanut butter cup or something. Yeah, Come on. Sure. God, it's, hard, it's, hard, it's, Come here. it's hard for her to get motivated in the mornings, I have to say. Is 2012 the end date? No. No, we're all going to be here in 2012, okay? I promise. In your opinion, James, what do you, what do you think is going to happen? I, you know, I think it's really interesting. I like learning about it because it's, you know, I find it interesting. But I, I just, I, I don't think there's any validity to any any significance of that date whatsoever, personally. Well, I'm getting ready to blow your mind in because I just saw a report the other day of a massive sinkhole that started up up in northern Ohio and is now spreading down the Mississippi. If that sinkhole continues on its current trajectory, it will literally chop the United States in half. So, uh, well, how does that point? correlate to a date on the calendar? That's what I mean. I I understand that you know terrible things happen all the time, but I don't I don't understand why that correlates to a date. Why it cor- It's not okay. It's not so much the date. It's just that this particular timing, this particular era well no that's not the right word either this particular well, it really doesn't correspond, correspond to a date or a time but it- so vaughn was really heavy into this america splitting in half thing for a while i remember this yeah and someone contacted me and the troll job was they're feeding him photos of people from new zealand walking in these like crevices left from an earthquake telling him they were like breaking photos from like new splits in the u.s right following the sinkhole. I remember this, yeah. And Von Elton was getting all worked. It's happening, I told you. Didn't he send one where, like, he it was a shitty Photoshop where it just showed, like, a person, like, halfway submerged into the hole? And it was like, look, Von, here's proof. And it was just awful. And he was like, yeah, look. Well, actually, no, that was, those are some of the photos, but they, some of those were real. But they were from an earthquake in New Zealand or some shit. Okay, okay. Before, I mean, but yeah, I, I, they were... Well, I remember it wasn't just Vaughn. It was a. It's, I don't know what what you know. This is. I, I'm assuming it's somewhere like 2013, 2014, something like that. Because Mouse is still there. It's 2012. Oh, is it 2012? So it's yeah. is this pre? Uh, you know the 2012. Uh, December second. Yeah, 2nd? because okay. yeah, yeah. This would be uh, after the events of what was supposed to be Doomsday. That was a oh, year okay. before. Okay. 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 But, uh, but yeah, I remember because it was it wasn't just Vaughn; it was a bunch of tars that were saying that the, yeah, yeah, that that fault line was going to split the United States. Yeah, yeah, he was waiting for it to crack. He thought it was happening. That was fucking funny. <laughs> it's the timing of the whole thing that it's 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 the idea it's the idea that that this is this is a particular time that was foreseen, and it, it it's it's the idea that. In this particular time, things are actually supposed to be happening anyway. Okay, um, you know it's it's like it's like the okay it's like the the solar system or the uh, or the uh, solar uh, oh, shit the solar storm. Okay, solar storms happen every eleven years like clockwork. Okay, they do. They happen every eleven years. Ninety nine point nine nine. Okay, ninety nine point nine nine percent of the time. All they are is just a bunch of pretty lights in the sky. No big deal. However, there are those certain times when a solar storm is not just a bunch of pretty lights in the sky. It's devastating, like it was in 1859 and like it's going to be in 2013, according to some experts. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. It's the timing. It's the, it's the, the, the situation. It's all of that shit, you know, and it's all, it all kind of culminates. So it's going to be like that movie, the aliens are going to come and rescue our children before the earth gets incinerated. I forget what it was uh, called. But. called but. The, the, the movie was called The Knowing with Nicolas Cage. And is it possible that that could be one possible scenario? Yeah. Yeah, it could. I, I do not advocate getting on board those spaceships, though. But, uh, yeah, that's one possible uh, scenario. Sure, why not? 
So, so what do you think, Vaughn? Are the, are the aliens going to take the retarded children or the smart children or just the guys with the foreskins? What do you think? Is there some special <laughs> process or just picked at random? What? I'm not touching that. I'm not touching that. That's not my place. I'm not touching that shit. I, ju- I guess I just what, don't What do you mean it's not your place? Is there some sort of religious or spiritual or deeper meaning to the whole thing? Or is it just... I, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not trying to pry or anything. But you kind of sounded like you were. Um, I don't know. Like there's more to what you're saying there. Let me tell you something, okay? Just because you don't believe gods exist, I do. And I think pissing off a deity is a bad thing. Now you can well, sit there and talk. No, about no, no wait a minute, Ron. I mean, come on now. Hold on a second. Hey, 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 shut up. All right. You want to get on cam and piss off a bunch of fucking deities that can squash you like a bug, you go right ahead, dude. But I'm not going to do that shit. I'm not going down that road. Okay? Wait a minute. Are you trying to say that God's fucking in the chat room here? Gods are omnipotent. I mean, I, 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 I'm one. sorry. Dear Lord, if, if I offended you here by being on stick cam, I, I, I'll turn my camera off. You know, you want to sit there and piss off deities. You know, do it on your own time. Don't do it in, in here. Right? I, 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 uh, I, I'm a little confused. I think he was talking about a, uh, Mr. Uh, Doctor Descent. Were you talking about aliens or? Yeah, well, see, I was we trying, I was trying to figure out because, because, because Vaughn said that it's possible, possible, and he didn't say it was going to happen. I mean, I'm not going to try to put words in his mouth. He said it was possible that the aliens might come back and take some of the people away before the solar storm goes off and incinerates the whole fucking earth and we all burn in holy hellfire or whatever. And I asked him simply, I said, are they going to come back and get the retarded kids, the vampire kids, the kids with the first skins? Is there some sort of special, or, or maybe just the Hebrews, or maybe just the damn fucking Pakistanis? I don't know. I mean, is there some reason? And then he started going into this whole thing about how I'd gotten on cam and pissed off deities and I was going to burn in hell and all this shit. And, and I'm totally confused. Well, if you're confused about it, I'm not going to explain it to you. I want you to figure it out, okay? I I guess uh, the correlation there being aliens. I, I'm not I'm not following James at all. Well, I kind of I kind of tend to think that the aliens might come and rescue some of the children or whatever. Believe what you want, you know. But, uh, you know, when you, when you sit there saying, uh, you know, what, who, who do we decide who lives and who dies, shit like that, uh, you know, you're going to start pissing off deities over that shit because that's, that's deities that handle shit like that, you know. Uh, yeah, but I'm not, I'm, saying, I'm not involved in the decision. I was just wondering if you knew who the aliens would decide on. I mean, obviously, we're not involved because if I was involved, I'd certainly pick myself. I nominate me to survive. Take me away on the spaceship. You know what I mean? Basically, I guess the ones there that would be in breach of the divine contract would be the aliens. Uh, humans are not making any decisions in this theoretical conversation. Right. Right. That's why I'm asking you, Vaughn, if, if, if there might be some reasoning to what they're going to do. Not us. I agree with you. I do not have a clue why my blog TV audio keeps cutting out. I do not know why. Let me try switching to another microphone. Dodging maybe. the hard questions. Vaughn, real quick question. I don't really know you, so what do you do for a living? A little bit of this, a little bit of that, going to and fro in the heavens and the earth, seeking whom I may devour. You? Uh, I'm a welder. Wow, cool. Well, when you're welding, I'm repairing. So I repair computers. Um, I sell computers, but the selling part ain't doing so hot, but I repair computers. That's what I do. I'm self-employed, so I don't yeah. have uh, the man on my back. So just so we're clear, he's never had a stock of computers that he's trying to move <laughs> out of the living room or anything. He's, he's had just... a failing business for 30 years. Yeah, he, his one client turned into a complete disaster. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, I'm going to step away for like 90 seconds. I'll be right back. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. All right, let's keep going here, folks. Uh, Are you still getting food stamps, Vaughn? My wife is getting assistance, but that's because of the three kids. Yeah. Kind of hefty, right? Yep. Yep. 
I don't know of anybody that can afford a $10,000 hospital bill with cash. Um, I could be wrong on that. You know, maybe everybody out there's got 10 grand in cash on their in their hip pocket, but I know I sure as fuck don't. Yeah, Illuminati money is hard to come by nowadays. I just find uh, the the talk of the December 21st. I, I I find the talk fascinating personally. I just I've yet to find any correlation between you know a, a natural. I, I know a lot of people talk about Nibiru, and to my to my very limited research, what I've discovered is it all basically comes from a man named Zachariah Sitchin. And cylinder seal YV577, I believe, is its uh, number. And it's due to uh, mis, mis, uh, misinterpretations to the Assyrian language that Mr. Sitchin was actually never took a class in ancient language study. That's my own personal research into Mr. Sitchin. I heard the same thing, Mr. Mike. I heard, I heard that uh, Mr. Sitchin was from Palestine. He was part Palestinian, part Jewish, and his translation wasn't exactly correct from the Sumerian. Well, he that came, that came up with the assertion of what the name Anunnaki meant, and it totally flies in the face of what they understand to be, and that's not to say that there's that there's not other interpretations. He's the only one that is making these, and he's backed up in a large part by a man named Eric Von Damigan. He uh, wrote a very popular book in the 70s called Chariots of the Gods. He actually has an extensive criminal record as well in the, in the country of Germany. Well, so that's that's the problem. I mean, when you when you start exposing the the New World Order and the Freemasons, suddenly they'll drum up a criminal record. They'll they'll discredit you. They'll do whatever it takes. I mean, the the Masons are some of the most horrible people next to the Palestinians. I beg the difference in that I am a petition member of the Freemasons. The only, the very little I know of the Freemasons, um, I know that there was a very big anti anti Masonic sentiment in the 19th century due to a murder in upstate New York. There was actually a political party that was known as the Mason Party that was destroyed because of this controversy. A man was literally had his throat slit and his tongue pulled out. There's a statue of him. In a park in upstate New York, I believe. Yeah, Al Capone. He was a mason. I mean, just saying, I'm a welder. I don't make that much money. And my buddy, my best friend that's in the Freemasons, he's a fucking pit, Pizza Hut delivery driver. You think we're going to be taking over the world driving for Pizza Hut and welding? I was just pointing out that there has been anti Masonic sentiment in the past. Um, We're not talking about normal people. We're talking about the upper echelon people. Uh, I have seen with my own eyes, and there was a video on YouTube even of it, of a Masonic Bible. And when you open the back of the Bible, it says this book dedicated to Lucifer. Okay, does you know, you did? Were you aware of that? Were you aware of that? It I have, I have a, I have a Masonic uh, Bible here right now. As a matter of fact, there, Vaughn, and I'm going to check that out. Give me a second. Yeah, Give me a second. Go ahead, go ahead. They actually asked me when I got into the free bases. There's two questions. You you can figure this out any day of the week. Anybody can by just simply asking for a petition from your Freemason lodge that is local to you. They asked me when I had the petition questions if I believe in a higher power no matter what. I don't care. They didn't care what I call my higher power. They didn't care of what belief I am, they just asked if I was in a higher power. And then they also asked me in the same question if I also, be, if I was believing in the constitutional rights and if I would uphold them. Me being a prior U.S. military veteran, and still am a veteran, but prior U.S. military soldier, I happily agreed. Hmm. Hold on. I'm, I'm looking for the last page of my Masonic Bible here. Hold on. They haven't forced any um, religion on me, but yet at least not that far. And yet I'm in my second belief. Right now I'm in my second actual full-blown degree. And my third one will be done probably in, probably well into June next year. All right, Vaughn, I don't know if you're listening, but I, I'm on the last page of this Masonic Bible here. It doesn't have a page number, so you're not going to be able to quote this, but it says, and I quote, 
No part of this book may be reproduced or copied in any form without written permission <laughs> from the publisher. Prices listed in the book may never. Oh, hold on, it's the wrong book. What little I know of the Masons, I do know that one book. of the most provocative Masons was a man named Manley Palmer Hall. He said a uh, lot sorry, of Sorry, I was reading out of my Illuminati fucking hand guide to fucking swindling and fucking trading gold. Now, the Masonic Bible here says. Every day, millions of people around the world receive wisdom, guidance, comfort, and strength from the Bible. It is filled with answers to life's toughest questions concerning love, life, fear, anger, depression, money management, blah, blah. You want me to get to the end part where it talks about the Lucifer and the Illuminati's, Vaughn? Whatever. Here's what it says. The rain and snow come down from the heavens and stand on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and breed bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I send it out and always produce fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to do, and you will prosper everywhere. I shall send it. Isaiah 55, 10, 11. That's what it says at the end of the Masonic Bible. I don't see shit about Lucifer. I don't see any of that crap. So maybe I got one of these counterfeit fucking eBay Masonic Bibles or whatever, but... I was actually going to point out that it was Mr. Hall that had all the provocative uh, uh, quotes about Lucifer. There's also a couple made by a man named Albert Pike. Correct. Albert Pike, Manly P. Hall. Um, there's a bunch of other high-level Masons. They all talk about Lucifer. There's the link to the video, by the way. There's the link to the video about the Masonic Bible. Uh, uh, and it, like I said, I think it was either in the front or the back. It said, this Bible dedicated to Lucifer. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't make this shit up. There, There's the link to the video. Yeah, but isn't the word Lucifer mean the enlightened one, the sun? I mean... I'm are you talking about yeah, Satan, I'm, or are you talking well, about I'm, Lucifer? I'm sure, I'm sure they'll spin it to say, oh, we're talking about Jesus in this reference. Well, you know, I disagree, but... I don't know, I was just wondering if Lucifer had a foreskin. I mean, <laughs> I mean, right, the light bearer, Lucifer, the enlightened one, the, the bringer of light. <laughs> it's kind of counterintuitive how supposedly Lucifer is the bad guy, yet he's the enlightened one. The whole thing's kind of fucking backwards. It's the guy who brings the truth. Hail Satan. I did find one thing pretty uh, pretty interesting. There was a letter, apparently, that Mr. Pike wrote to a man named Mancini, where it outlines basically uh, three entanglements that people have come to say are the three world wars. And what I did was... There's actually a really uh, interesting guy on YouTube named Leonard Ulrich who deeply researched that. And while he does agree that there is definitely something fishy about the, uh, the Freemasons, is, is at least at the higher echelons, he pointed out that it was a well-instituted fraud by, by a man named, I forget his name, let me see if I can look it up, but he actually forged those letters in the late 19th century. During the same amount, around the same time that the Masons were taking a lot of heat from uh, the murder of uh, the man in upper, upstate New York, I forget how it all ties together, but it's very interesting. So that's why that's why I agree with Von Helton. I think at the lower levels, you know, you, you don't really know what's going on. They kind of get you in there, they sucker you in there, they tell you all this good stuff. They're going to do this and that, but I, I, I don't think I think Von's alluding to the fact that at the higher levels. You don't really know exactly what's going on. I would also work from the basic tenet that when people do something they're proud of, they typically don't do it in secret. They typically uh, do it in the sunshine. But at the well, same time, I do understand there's a lot of anti-Masonic, you know, it's, and, this, and this has happened before. It's happened in the past. Well, that and, that, and there's the rub, because Ben Franklin himself even commented on that. He said, "People that are people that do things out in the open do do so for liberty. People that do things in secret." That was uh, actually a quote from Jesus Christ in the Bible. Well, 
Ben Franklin was quoting Jesus, or Jesus was yeah, quoting yeah, Ben Franklin, Franklin was that, yeah, the actual I forget what yeah, part. Ben Franklin, Jesus <laughs> was quoting <laughs> Ben Franklin, dude. Yeah, yes. I believe you may be correct. Anyway, the point is, is that if you if you do something out in the open, you're doing it for the cause of liberty. If you do something in secret, you're doing you're doing it for the cause of tyranny or something to that effect. And I just want to point well, something else out real quick. The really interesting thing about Mr. Franklin is this. Not only was he a member of the notorious <laughs> fucking Johan's about to go into it there, fucking <laughs> God Almighty. But I, and again, I'm not trying to sound like a douchebag when I say this, but clearly I'm setting up right. Von, I'm, I'm telling Vaughn what he wants to hear so that Doctor D can talk about uncircumcised Pakistanians and fucking aliens and shit. Right, right, right. Oh, that's funny. Hellfire Club. That was very anti-theist. They were very against Christian morality. They also exhumed three dead bodies from his house in, in Philadelphia. Now, there's no way to tie Benjamin Franklin to those bodies, but it's very interesting. All right, which is why I think Vaughn should come clean one of these nights. I mean, maybe tonight's not tonight, Vaughn, but I mean, you, you've expressed many times here that you can resurrect small pets and whatever. <laughs> No, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not accusing you of anything, but I mean, if you have that kind of knowledge, I think that they're, they're, that your studies have taken you far beyond what you want to admit in public here. Well, Dr. Descent. There's a big, wonderful world out there. Get up off your ass and go outside and go experience it. That's the only thing I know to tell you to do. Because I can't explain to you the supernatural. That would be a waste of my time. And I'm not going to waste your time, my time, or anybody else's time doing it. There's the door. Go out and experience it. You know, if you really want to experience the supernatural, you can do so right now. All you got to do is go outside your door and start experiencing it. Yeah, but see, I'm totally lost. I, I mean, I, I know what you're saying. I appreciate what you're saying, but I mean, it, it seems to me like you have some kind of, uh, you know, uh, insight, and and you won't you won't even help me, the completely lost sheep in the woods here, off in the direction of resurrecting small pets. Resurrect, Mister Frank. I mean, to me, that's that's a cop out. It's like I know, but I'm not gonna fucking tell you. Fuck you. Go find it yourself. I need to re resurrect Mr. Mittens. Uh, yeah, I guess I think I'm lost. I don't, I'm not really sure what uh, what we're talking about. Well, I mean, it's clear that Von Helton knows some supernatural stuff. I mean, he either has Jedi, Jedi power or Masonic knowledge or pagan knowledge or vampire knowledge or whatever. But, I mean, if you can bring back small creatures from the dead, you obviously, uh, I don't know, I mean, you have some sort of super fucking knowledge. But yet when I ask about it, and I, I mean it completely sincerely, Von Helton just dismisses me. He's like, yeah, why don't you figure it out yourself? It's terrible. Apparently, you're not very knowledgeable about the Bible. There's a passage in the Bible that says, do not cast your pearls before a swine. All right. That's not meaning that you're a pig. What it means is that you would take that information and use it against me to, I don't know, maybe make a hate video. Like you're probably doing right now. You're recording me now, aren't you, Dr. Descent? I bet you are. <laughs> no, I'm not. Bullshit. I'm not. Yeah, right. Sure you aren't. Yeah, okay. I don't know. What, 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 what would it take for me to prove to you that I'm not recording you, Vaughn? Dr. Descent, you are a longtime troll and hater. And so is many others. Okay, and I'm not stupid. I know that this is all being recorded. Well. Yeah, maybe it's the ghost of Chang. There you go. Yeah, is that what is that what's troubling you, Doctor Descent? The ghost of Chang is troubling you. Is that what it is? No, what's troubling me is is uh, actually my my dog. I've got a 13 and a half year old dog that I'm really concerned is not doing so well, and I just thought. You know, if one morning I wake up and the dog's all cold and dead on the floor or whatever, maybe I could use some of the fucking wisdom you impart on me to fucking resurrect the dog. You tried to get me killed, motherfucker. Then you tried to implicate me in somebody's death. And you want me to resurrect your dog? Fuck you. 
I'm not Jesus. Well, I, I, listen, Vaughn, I'm not saying you have to do it. I know you and I have had our differences. I'm just, I'm just wondering. I mean, if you could at least give me a goddamn, if you could at least fucking point me in the right direction, I'm, I'm willing to do the reading and the research and the Bible or whatever I got to read. But I'm, you know, I have three kids. If the dog's dead, I'm gonna have to fucking tell the kids, and they're gonna be fucking, you know, you know, you got kids. They're gonna be totally heartbroken if the dog dies. If there was some way that daddy could take the dog out in the garage or do whatever, whatever it takes. I mean, I don't know. I mean, throw some garlic, fucking say a spell, whatever. Come on, Vaughn. You know how it is. Your kids will be upset if your dog died or whatever. You, you, come on, you know. I'm, I'm just asking for a hint. How do, how do I do this? How do I do this? I wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire, okay? <laughs> Maybe you would do it for the dog then? I, uh, the dog is innocent. Yeah, think about the head. dog. I mean, come on. No. No, sorry. Sorry. You guys you guys harass me for fucking years, and then you want me to help you? Fuck you. Fuck you. I ain't doing shit. Yeah, but you keep saying I've harassed you for years. How many times, listen, Vaughn, how many times have I ever spoken to you? Like, this is the second time I've ever actually had a conversation with you. So I don't know why you keep saying I didn't do anything. You're, I think your videos speak for themselves. So I don't want to hear it. <coughs> yeah, but we were, we were running for president. We were, we were in competition, you know. It's, you know <laughs> Just politics, you know. <laughs> hey, Kirk, you know. I was running for president. You were for president. What? All those hate videos you made uh, about me and shit. No. no, no, I don't care. Yeah, but I already tried to apologize, and I honestly told you I'm sorry. I didn't realize if I'd have fucking reported you to the Obama hate watch website that I would have had the fucking only one I was kill you. I already apologized. What's well, supposed to? You've been trolling me all fucking night, man. What the fuck? I warned you, doctor. I warned you, man. You keep trolling, and it's going to become too obvious. Too That's fucking right. obvious. That's right. Oh, it was obvious hours ago. Yeah, but I'm not trolling. I mean, well, I, I, I love how you fucking bastards pass judgment on me. You see, how do you know I'm not sincere? How do you know I don't have a sincere heart? I mean, please, if you think I'm not fucking being sincere, at least try to demonstrate it with facts or reasons. See, this is the one time I'll actually agree with Doctor. Sorry, Vaughn, but that he's not trolling you. To be honest, he he may be sounding re retardedly fucking sarcastic, but this, I, I've known trolls. Trust me, I've trolled black cats, and I do troll once in a while. But no, he's not trolling you this time. No, I'm not yeah, trolling you at all, Vaughn. I mean, just because because we don't agree doesn't mean I'm trolling you. I mean, please. There's only you and me, and we just disagree. <laughs> That's a popular song, by the way. Yeah, well, could you at least send me a damn link and point me in the right direction? Because, like I said, I'm really worried about the dog, and my kids are going to be fucking upset. No. If I can fucking what bring the no, dog back to life, that would be epic. Okay, I suggest, sir, you go and try some black voodoo or some of that shit. If that doesn't work, then try a white voodoo. If that shit doesn't work, then you're fucked. There you go. Thanks a lot. Black voodoo actually does work, sadly. I've messed around with it a little bit. My buddy my and um, basic. My buddy and basic. Hey, you know, he could get a Ouija board and fuck around with that. That would be real fun. He'll get you a Ouija board. Too. What? A Ouija board? A Ouija board, yeah. Q-U-I-J-A, I think it is. Uh, yeah, a Ouija board. It's man. actually spelled O U. J A, I believe. Something weird like oh, that. It's a weird me. spelling. Yeah, it's a weird they, spelling. They sell it at Toys R Us. Maybe it's an O. But yeah, get you, get you a Ouija well, board. Yeah, I've heard of those. Fuck, of those. Fuck, yeah, get you a Ouija board. Fuck around with that and see what happens. You know, you. I Do I help bring the dog back to life if it dies? The Ouija board? Uh, you, can, you can ask the Ouija board. You can ask the Ouija board if, uh, if it will uh, help you bring your dog back. Sure. There you go. Just ask the Ouija board, man. The Ouija so, board. so the Ouija board, I can use the Ouija board to get answers to the question that you don't want to answer because I'm a fucking troll and a hater and an a exactly. and I'm trying to save my dog and, and exactly. my kids' exactly. pain. Exactly, exactly, that's correct. Go get your Ouija board and just, you know, ask that Ouija board all, all, all the questions you want to ask it. And there you go. 
Thanks, Vaughn. I appreciate that. I knew you would point me in the right direction. So I'm going to go out to Toys R Us, get a Ouija board. I'm going to ask the Ouija board the stuff that you won't tell me so I can bring the dog back to life. That's right. That's right. That's right. And besides, folks, it wasn't dogs that were considered gods. It was cats. So, you know, correct yourself. I never said my dog was a god. I just said I had a dog. And if it dies, my kids are going to be no, upset. That's talking, all I said. I, no, 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 no. I'm talking to the people on blog TV. They're saying dogs were considered gods back then. I said, no, it was cats. I know. I uh, actually owned a Ouija board for a long, you know, years and years and years as a teenager. And I, I never had any results whatsoever. I tried very hard to summon something, and it was impossible. Do you have a Ouija board, Vaughn? Yeah, but yeah, but now see that's that's where you that's where you failed because I I feel confident that Doctor Descent it will succeed where you failed. I really do. Do you have one, Vaughn? Do you have a Ouija board? I'm not at liberty to discuss what I have and do not have. What's that? Because I'm not. Because I'm not. Hmm. Must be the agencies keeping tabs on you again. Yeah, I'm like having a atomic <laughs> bomb, Dr. Descent. You never know. Who knows? Ooh. I mean, oh, what I, did he say? I did say in a video that it was perfectly lawful, in my opinion, for a person to own nuclear powered weapons. Did I not? Yeah, I said that in a video, didn't I? As long as, oh, you, can maintain, as, long as you can maintain it, you know, as long as you can maintain it and keep it safe. Then, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you can have whatever you want, right? You heard um, it here, fo first, folks. Vaughn really, bon has really a bomb. What guns you can have and what weapons you can have, does it? It just says you're allowed to have weapons. So, theoretically... No, I, I, I agree, but, I mean, you, you don't think it's unreasonable if you keep nuclear weapons next no, to each other in your fucking no. trailer park? No, I don't. As long as, you, as long as you can maintain it and as long as you can keep it safe, then I see no reason why a person can't have a nuke. I can't see no reason why a person can't have a Gatling gun or, or a bomb or anything, as long as you can keep it safe and as long as you can maintain it. You know, the, the problem that we have, though, is that in order to maintain a nuclear-powered missile, you would uh, most likely uh, have to have thousands and thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars. So that's, that's the fundamental difference there. But as far as my take on the Second Amendment, my take on the Second Amendment is that you can have whatever the fuck you want, so long as you can maintain it, and as long as it is kept safe. Okay, well, I mean, while I agree with you, I, I don't really understand how you read the, the maintenance and safety of the Second Amendment, because checking the Second Amendment, again, I'm not really sure how you interpret safety and maintenance out of that, but... Well, there's a term there called well-regulated militia, okay? What does well-regulated mean? What, what does that term well-regulated mean? Um, I would say meaning your, your pressure check valve is properly adjusted. So, in other words, you have to maintain something. You have to keep it safe. You have to maintain it, right? Well-regulated. Yeah, but a militia is not the same as a nuclear weapon. A, a well-regulated, properly maintained militia is not the same as a well-regulated, properly maintained nuclear bomb. The well-regulated militia is the one that's handling the bomb. Okay, they're the people that are handling the bomb. So, therefore, if they're well-regulated, that means that they have the knowledge and the ability to maintain those weapons in an orderly fashion. Okay, because they're what? They're yeah, but it doesn't say a well-regulated. It says a well-regulated militia, not a well-regulated fucking weapon. See, you're trying to take it five steps. You're saying, well, if I have a well-regulated militia, the militia, therefore, by extension, will well-regulate my weapon. Yes, because that's who regulates the weapon. Okay. That's yeah, but you don't have a militia, so why should you have a nuclear weapon? You are the militia. You are the militia. You are the Punisher, but whatever. Touche. Very well. Very well. I, mean, I, think, I think certain restrictions are somewhat appropriate. I mean, it's not like, you know, I don't know. I don't I don't really want my neighbors to have nuclear weapons. It's just too high of a hazard, you know what I mean? I think it'd be cool as hell. Everybody's got a nuclear weapon. 
That way, if somebody gets pissed off, we just fucking off each other. You know, the whole fucking planet just gone, and that's the end of it. You know, I, I'm I'm actually I'm actually kind of looking forward to the third incarnation of humanity on this planet because the second is obviously under the control of thirteen uh, illicit families that have just seized control of this whole goddamn planet. And I'm really getting sick of it. So I, I'm actually looking forward to the third incarnation because hopefully the third incarnation will not have the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, Morgans, Carnegie's, Warbirds, all controlling the planet like they do now. That's kind of bullshit. We got a whole bunch of foreskinless, goddamn Luciferian, fucking devil worshiping morons running around. I'm worshiping a demon in Bohemian Grove, California. Oh, is that where the demon lives? That's where they're worshipping it at, Bohemian Grove, California. But those motherfuckers don't have foreskins either. Yeah, I am. Go I, it's fortuitous that you bring that up, um, Mark, uh, because I will actually be doing an expose on David Wilcock. Uh, it turns out he is a sham, and I will be doing an expose on him. Uh, so, you know, be looking forward uh, for that video. Be uh, David, well, David Wilcox is actually the guy that put out the disinformation that all the elites are going to be rounded up in May. He actually went on a radio show crying, saying that someone had threatened to kill him and all these silly things. He's, he's, he's just a fool. Anyone that will believe him is a fool, in my opinion. Well, the, the, thing, that, the thing that irks me is that he's running around claiming to be uh, Edgar Casey? Well, <laughs> well, I spoke with Casey's representatives. Uh, very nice people, by the way. I spoke with them uh, on two or three occasions, and um, suffice it to say, David Wilcox is full of bullshit. And uh, so I'm going to be exposing his ass. Uh, be looking forward to that video. You will love it. Uh, because it, it totally and completely exposes him as a fraud. Um, you know, and, and, it's, and like you said, it's not just the Edgar Casey thing, but it's, you know, but uh, the Edgar Casey thing is the thing that got me because, you know, I've always been a fan of Edgar Casey ever since I first heard about him. You know, and when somebody's running around trying to claim him to be Edgar Casey. Now, having said that, is it possible that Edgar Casey is going to be returning? Uh, you know, here in the future, yes. Uh, supposedly, Edgar Casey is out there right now. But it isn't David Wilcock. <laughs> okay? It's not David Wilcock. Yeah, well, see, Ron, I mean, not, not, to, not to go back to the beginning of the night's conversation, but uh, see, I don't think that David Wilcox's name is anything but a stage name. I mean, his first name might be David. But, I mean, look at the last name. I mean, you're you're aware of how the Illuminati operate, and they use certain keywords and whatever. But Will Cox, Will Will Ted Cox, Will Will Ted Cox. I mean, think about this. This guy's obviously a circumciser of truth, a disinformation agent. I mean, think about that. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. now. Will Cox uh, very well could be a British name. Uh, in fact, I think it is a British name. Uh, but, you know, could there be a play on words there or something? I don't know. Maybe. I don't care. Uh, what I do care about, though, is that he's trying to impersonate Edgar Casey, and that's a load of shit, and I'm going to expose his ass for it. Um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, some of the outlandish claims he's made, I'll probably bring those up, too. But my big focus is the Edgar Casey thing. Then, um, in addition to that, I'll also be mentioning what Edgar Casey has to say about 2012 and all that good stuff. So uh, it'll be an informative video. I think people will like the video. Yeah, I agree with you, Vaughn. I, I think David Wil Wilcox is definitely fucking full of shit. I mean, if you hear the guy, you know, he's always spreading disinformation, fear-mongering, coming up with stuff that never happens. But uh, <clears throat> before, I, before I leave, I mean, somebody asked me a question a, a couple of weeks ago. I was wondering, I was wondering, I mean, do you, do you think that Hitler might still be alive? I mean, I'm not, I'm, I know everything I ask you is controversial. You think that I'm trying to fucking troll you or whatever, but I, I, 
there is some pretty good evidence out there that Hitler might still be alive in a dumb or something. All right, there there actually was, um, there actually was the idea floated that uh, Hitler escaped the bunker, that the person that was killed was one of his body doubles and not him. Uh, basically, they allege that Adolf Hitler had three body doubles, and that one of those body doubles was in the bunker at the time of the explosion, and not Adolf Hitler himself. Is that true? I don't know. I wasn't there. Is it possible? Yes. Uh, the reason we know it's possible is because Fidel Castro himself had six body doubles. Okay, so yes, it is possible. Uh, Saddam Hussein had two or three body doubles, uh, if not more. So, you know, could it be that uh, Hitler's body double died in his place? Yeah, very possible. Um, you know, but, true. But, 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 here's the thing. Here's the important part. The important part is, is that even if he had survived the bunker blast, he would by now be like 100 fucking years old or some shit. You know, so I mean, you know, it, he wouldn't be much, he would, there wouldn't be much going on with him. You know, I mean, he'd be too fucking old to care, you know. Well, I would, I would put it to that the, the you know, as far as uh, Hitler goes, I would put it to uh, the fact that the Nazi engineers were actually pretty advanced in their technology, and there's actually a lot of things that they had that we that are just mind blowing, from what I understand. So, is it possible they were a, a, in, a, even in a rudimentary way somehow able to maybe not, per, you know, con preserve his body per se? But for yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, sorry to interrupt, but actually, I, I, I mean, I know this seems kind of far-fetched. I mean, this is going to even sound far out there for you, Vaughn, but that's what I heard the whole space program thing was about. What they were trying to do is, this was before they had liquid nitrogen or cryogenics or any of that kind of preservation stuff. What I heard is that the entire space program was developed so that they could put Hitler's head in a crater on the moon to keep it frozen. I was... Go ahead, James. I'm sorry. I just, I, you know, that <laughs> that's okay. That's a new one for me, man. They're going to take Hitler's head and put it in a crater in the moon. Okay, that's that's. Well, yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> because that's I'm sure you're aware, aware Von, that the uh, that the moon is like almost close to absolute zero. This was before they had liquid nitrogen or any of that goddamn head preservation crazy crap. But the whole entire space program, supposedly, I mean, who fucking knows, you know, it's hard to tell. But the whole idea was that was the closest place where you could put somebody's body without an atmosphere and super cold temperatures, whatever. It won't be disturbed. Nobody's going to come by or whatever. And apparently, they have Hitler in a crater on the moon. Dude, you know, make, you know, too, whatever. Dude, go look it up. Dude, that's too far out even for me, okay? No. Bullshit. Total bullshit. I'm not buying that for one second. Somebody, somebody's fed you a lot. If you actually believe that, there's something wrong with you because I'm not even going to buy that one. And I've heard it all. And I've never heard that. And now that I have heard it, I have to call bullshit on it because there's, that's just ridiculous. Um, you know. They destroyed NASA bombed the moon so that they could destroy his head. Oh, <laughs> that's crazy. exactly, Vaughn. Exactly. That's exactly why the fuck they did it. Now you're thinking. See, think about it for a minute. It's not so far fetched. The coldest place on the moon is near the poles. That's where Hitler's body was stored in that small crater up there, and they obviously fucking bombed it to destroy Hitler's body once they finally caught up with him. But, you know, I know, whatever. I mean, it's far-fetched, I admit it, but think about it. Think about it. Connect the dots, and you will understand. Is that a Bill Cosby sweater? Uh, What Bill Cosby sweater? What the fuck are you talking about? Well, I, I wanted to say before I left that I had a, had a good time here tonight. I wanted to thank everyone for the, uh, for the discussion, and I'll catch you uh, guys on the next go-around. No problem, Mega. See you, man. But James, yeah. you do—you do have to 
understand the fact that they did have good technology in the Nazi era, because you yourself, I believe, are, are a believer in the fact that they did a lot of spacecrafts and secret service and stuff like that. Well, if they had the um, technology to say, be able to make a spacecraft that wouldn't burn anything, but self-perpetuate itself up into the air in a circular motion and self-propulsion itself across the sky. Wouldn't they technically, theoretically, be able to make a machine that would hibernate a body or a person, an individual, to where their age is never a factor, where it could actually stay young and stay cool until they need him, need their great leader? Exactly. See, that's the thing, Vaughn. I mean, I'm sure you're aware that the Nazi program had recovered flying saucer, alien technology, whatever you want to call it, angel technology, lots of different words for this, New World Order, whatever. But see, that's always been the goals of the elite. And I'm sure you and I would agree with this is immortality to become like, you know, a Luciferian god or whatever. But obviously, after they recovered this alien technology, they realized that these beings or angels or whatever you want to call them, this is, you know, I mean, you don't have to agree with me, but these guys had reached almost immortal states or regenerative bodies or whatever. But Hitler and the Illuminati and the entire, you know, regime there knew that uh, that the, the technology of the world wasn't quite to that point, so they obviously had to figure out a way to preserve the bodies until human technology caught up to the point where they could actually do this. So what better way than to preserve their bodies in a place where the bodies could be preserved, untouched? I mean, you know, back in the day, the pharaohs buried their bodies in pyramids thinking that was going to be the best thing and whatever, but it didn't work. So I'm convinced, I'm telling you, Adolf Hitler's body was sent to space using alien technology and NASA and all that fucking Project Paperclip shit and put in a crater on the moon where it was untouched, undisturbed, and now, now, now that the fucking, now that the Third Reich is back, they sent a probe to destroy Hitler's body on the moon. I mean, you just gotta connect the dots. The information's all out there. It's not my fault if you don't believe me. You're just going to have to do the research and figure this out. I mean, it, 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 I know it sounds really far-fetched, but do the research, man. Do the research. I, I actually think it would make an interesting movie if you follow that plot right up to the point where they nuke Hitler's body on the moon, but the twist is Hitler comes back. I try. Right. From the nuclear fuse, right. But as like you kind of like Superman 4. Like exactly. The sun dude. You kinda, but he, or kind of like a Godzilla thing. Kaiju, that's right. Yeah, it and, comes and like that, a space kaiju. Not to step on your gag here, but they've actually made that movie already. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, Nazi UFOs from the Moon. That's a, yeah. I, I think I don't think that's the actual title, but it's there is <laughs> there is a movie about Moon Nazis. Okay, well, I don't know. There's something there. Does but Hitler I, come back <laughs> as a mutated nuclear I, you know, beast? Does you know, it, I think it was kind of a B movie, and I did. I was really hyped. I was called Iron Sky. Oh, it didn't get, it was it. wasn't in theaters. I don't remember that one being it, advertised. I don't. I don't. It was the movie's called Iron Sky, and I think there's even a sequel. Okay, but it was pretty wacky from what I remember. I imagine uh, it sounds pretty. But I remember the <laughs> sending Hitler's head to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, dude. Like I said, that is too far out, even for me. Well, I mean, if you can come up with a better place to preserve a human body in absolute zero temperature where it's not going to be messed with, where you don't have to pay to maintain it, you don't have to, you don't have to, I mean, think about this, Vaughn. I mean, even if you had a bunch of money and you paid somebody to freeze your head and put it in liquid nitrogen here on the earth, there's always the chance that somebody could, you know, you know what I mean? Somebody could blow up the building, somebody could stop paying the bills, whatever power could go out, there could be a tidal wave, whatever. At least if you're someplace in space and where else closer than the moon, you're not gonna be touched. There's no you know, there's nothing there's nothing gonna mess with you there. There's no bugs, there's no people. You're frozen, you're right there, you're within reach. They can always bring you back, resurrect you as the fucking Antichrist at any time. You even agreed you yourself, agreed Bob, yourself Bob, that they could have that technology. Yeah, well, look okay, look. Okay, here's the thing. All right. 
the, the not we know that the Nazis went to the North Pole and the South Pole. We know that shortly thereafter. Exactly, Vaughn. Not, not trying to interrupt you, you interrupt but you. why do you think they went there? It was cold. Hello, and there's no people there, but go ahead. Now, the, we know that they went to the North Pole and the South Pole. That is documented. Their U-boat, their U-boat uh, summaries are, are absolute proof of that. Um, <clears throat> we also know <clears throat> we also know that after they came back from the North and South Pole, they started creating all these neat weapons, uh, jet jet fighter craft and rocketry and all this stuff, literally out of nowhere. Of course, they'll say, "Oh, our scientists invented it," you know. But it all start it all didn't start until well after they came back from the North and South Pole. So, is it possible? And I emphasize the word possible. That they might have gleaned some type of extraterrestrial technology while they were there at the time, maybe. So that's what I'm saying, Vaughn. I mean, I, I don't have all the story here. I don't have all the pieces, and I certainly don't have all the knowledge from doing all the research you've done. But you're right. When you start to connect the dots, they went to the North Pole. What, what does the North Pole and the moon have in common? I mean, they're cold. They're remote. There's no people there. There's no, you know, civilization. There's no, you know, I'm saying nothing to disturb you, no animals, whatever. So, after they recovered this alien technology where they realized these aliens were almost immortal, you know, I mean, even the Bible talks about people living for hundreds, thousands of years or whatever. That That's the secret. The I mean, that's what heaven's supposed to be, a place where you're immortal. But anyway, I'm not going to try to get it too far off the track. But I'm simply suggesting that the Nazi regime had some of this technology. Now, they didn't understand all this technology at the time, obviously. They, they tried to reverse engineer bits and pieces of it and this and that. And you, you, you've, I'm sure you're familiar with the stories of Foo Fighters, Flying Disc, UFO, Reverse Engineer, whatever. But the point is, these guys understood that eventually, eventually human technology, if it could be understood and reverse engineered, would, would catch up to the point where these guys and these dictators and these Illuminati type people, I mean, that's their ultimate goal. Immortality, you know, uh, uh, to be a god, basically, an immortal being. So, I'm telling you, I've heard information, this terrible information, you're going to have to do the research, Vaughn. You're going to have to connect the dots and see you have you have parts of the picture here already. The the polar exploration, the, the UFOs, flying saucers, big fucking moon landings, whatever. I'm telling you, they put Hitler's body in a crater in the northern pole of the moon and then fucking just recently was attacked by the jihadists from the Middle East. That's who's really behind the polar fucking exploration to destroy Hitler's body. But you're gonna have, you're gonna have to actually do the research. I know it sounds far fetched, fun. Well, I know that's bullshit because the Muslims would re the Muslims reverence Adolf Hitler and he them because they both hate Jews. So I know that's bullshit. They wouldn't try to destroy his body. If anything, they would try to bring it back. I mean, uh, I, I, would, I don't know. See, I'm more of a believer that the U.S. would try to do that, that the U.S., and maybe that's why, that's that's probably where your second light source came from, Bond. Hey, think about it. There's explosions in the middle of space. There could be, there could be light come from those explosions showing you the moon, and they could have the Chinese in on it. That could, that could actually be, see, maybe that little frozen water lens on the fucking Chinese satellite lenses was put there deliberately to fucking block out and obscure the photos that would actually be of them destroying Hitler's body in that crater. Maybe it was all deliberate so that they could have plausible deniability and say, look, see, yeah, here, here's all the photos, everybody look at the photos, I don't know what that is, a little blue speck, a little blue, but they, they were using that to obscure the explosion. Kind of like how they faked a bunch of those moon landing photos, you know what I mean? Well, we went to the moon. It's just that there, there was somebody already there when we got there. So we came back and shot it all in the studio. But we did go to the moon. But you get the basis of it, though, Vaughn. It's a cover for a cover. Yes, I exactly. understand. I understand. Double, that it could be double a triple cover up, trying to hide Hitler's head. 
in a crater on the moon. It's just like if this uh, NASA NASA supposedly is going to discuss some monumental thing that's going to happen tomorrow. There's there's you know they got some big important announcement tomorrow. NASA does. And why do you think they're yes tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow, Monday, Monday, December the 3rd, NASA has an important announcement to make to the whole world. They say it's monumental. They say it's, it's, it's just an incredible situation. Uh, you know, now they won't disclose what it is, but you'll just have to tune in tomorrow. Because, uh, you know, supposedly uh, they're going to drop a bombshell tomorrow that's just going to amaze the world, they said. Now. Yeah, well, yeah, I already I know what the damn answer is. If, if you're talking, talking about, about that black, black fucking black powder, powder mark on Mercury, 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 where they obviously, they obviously bombed already to destroy Gandhi's body. <laughs> what the no, fuck? That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm <laughs> talking about is, okay, they're going to, you know, they're they're saying that oh we got this great announcement and all it's being done is to take your eyes off of what Obama and his cronies are doing uh, I think Obama is going to make a push to take our guns real soon and this this NASA announcement thing can be oh look over here at what NASA is doing and then while you're looking at what NASA is doing they're, they're getting ready to take our guns away folks they, they can get two Supreme Court justices this term. Two of them. Do you realize that with two Supreme Court justices that would give Obama a majority on the Supreme Court? And that he can literally ramrod through anything he wants? Literally. Because Thomas and Scalia are not, there's not, an, they're, you know, they don't have enough votes in order to sway it back into the conservative camp. So Obama knows this. And so Obama could theoretically be uh, already picking those two ultra-liberal socialist slash communist Supreme Court justices so that he can get ready to take away our Second Amendment. It could be a very real possibility. Now, alternatively, those two Supreme Court justices could also be used to usher in Sharia law into this country by still. Um... You know, so I don't know which one it's going to be, but it's either going to be guns or Sharia law. I don't think there's anything else high up on the totem pole that it could be. So get ready because it's coming. Whatever it is, it's coming. But yeah, Obama gets two Supreme Court justices this term. And with those two, two Supreme Court justices, he can literally ramrod through anything he wants. Well, it would make... I love listening back to these old Vaughn videos of him just like speaking with such confidence of predicting the future, right? I mean, like, it's none amazing. of it happens. None of it happens. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Do you think he was coming for guns, though? Holy shit. Every member of his fucking cabinet is anti gun. <laughs> yeah. What? One more proof do I need? Obama's anti gun and everybody on his cabinet's anti gun. Hello. You know, this ain't rocket science. His if everybody wants anti-gun, he's going to make a play for the guns. Hell yeah, he is. Oh, I've never heard of him doing anything against guns. Get ready, man. Get ready. You're about to see some amazing shit go down where it concerns Obama. What has he done regarding gun laws? Well, I'd have to Google the specifics, but he has... Um, worked in collusion with the Democrats to come up with a new assault weapons ban. That's just one of the things that he's done. Uh, but there's, uh, there's, there's other ones too, but I'd have to Google them. The point is, though, is that he's been vehemently against us having guns. His whole cabinet is anti-gun. And like I said, there's even legislation that they've already done that's anti-gun. But I think what it is is that he's going to make a big push uh, to get them Supreme Court justices on there so that he can literally repeal the Second Amendment. I'm telling you, I think it's a real possibility. Now, is it going to for sure happen? I don't know. But is it a possibility? You bet your ass. It's either going to be Sharia law or try to take our guns. It's going to be one of those two, I firmly believe. 
Well, you know, I can understand if they want to, you know, assault on a uh, ban on us, uh, assault weapons. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, hey, I'm a gun owner. I'm, uh, you know, but I just don't see the point in having an assault rifle. I'm not going to be launching a friggin' assault. There's, <clears throat> there's nothing I need to do. Uh, with a gun, you know, a gun is just a tool, like a hammer or a screwdriver. You know, I, there's nothing that I need to do or any normal American should ever need to do that would require assaulting something with rifles. But the well, thing man. is, the thing sorry, is, but the thing is there, cowboy, we could use those assault rifles and everything. So when Obama does yeah, take down our right, I hear you. I got to reload the room. Hang on, he's going to reload. It. But also, James, if you were to own a nuke in your um, little trailer home there, how would you get rid of these these CSM gas and manage to do it in your mobile home? Well, see, that's that's the point. I I yeah, I was very clear i said you have to be able if you want it if you want a nuclear weapon you you should be allowed to have one provided you can maintain it and keep it in a safe environment now obviously it's going to cost a ton of fucking money to keep that weapon in a safe and secure environment simple as that I'm sorry, I, I, I missed everything that uh, Jay was saying there because I, I had to reload. Can we back up a couple seconds here? Yeah, well, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I just asked him a filler question while you're reloading. Um, but yes, but what do we need these assault rifles and... Well, I guess Vaughn would have no problem with like a, a group like Al-Qaeda purchasing a nuclear weapon as long as they can maintain them. It's right. a God-given right. I guess, right? Pistols and back me up, Vaughn. If wouldn't we need these when Obama wants to take them away? I mean, what what is he going to do to enforce them? If he doesn't like the military and doesn't like the National Guard, then how is he going to enforce the fact that he's going to take away our guns? Local police or how? And when he does, don't we need them? Well, let me ask you this question real quick, Jay. Do you think if you had, you know, any assault rifle you want, all the assault rifles you want, do you think if the government wants them, they can't get them? You don't think the full force, might and force of the United States military could take your rifle away from you? But the thing is there, my friend, if we can't even use our military to attack a foreign country that has taken down our own two towers in our own country and use them to our benefit to take care of these apparent savages and jihadists, then how are we going to be able to use them against our own people? If we're so huggy-dubby with the other people, how are we not going to be that way to each other? I'm sorry, I'm not drawing the connection between that and a fucking assault weapons ban. Say, if he wants to go ahead and do the assault weapons ban, how is he going to do the seven wonders nuke case with us and take away all of our weapons? And, you know, just go ahead and take them if he won't even force another country to play nice with us. Anybody else? Is it me? If it's me, tell me. Cause I... I don't know what in the hell he's talking about. I'm saying, because if, if Obama's going to take away our assault rifles and everything, yes, if he's going to take away our guns, how is he going to do it? How exactly is he going to do it? Because he won't even use a fucking military to fight for our freedom. He said he was pulling out. In reality, he invoked a huggy-dubby-lovey session with the Iraqi people and teaching them modern-day security, police force, and stuff like that with our military when they die countlessly at night from the people they are training. How is he going to take the military and hurt us 
and try to take our guns from us with the military or anything else when you can't even use them for a good fucking cause. Um, are you prescribed any medication uh, that you haven't been taking? No, I haven't been prescribed anything. I'm actually thinking very clear. I'm stating this from a soldier's point of view, actually, the fact that Obama uses our military to teach the defending country that we are currently in a conflict with, teach them their, to rebuild their country, and yet he won't just wipe them off and go home. He just wants to hug them and love them and be happy with them and try to make peace instead of just fucking wiping them out. So how do you think he's going to react to trying to take away our fucking weapons? Okay, let me, I think I understand what you're saying now. Let me make sure I got this right. You're saying that he won't be able to take our weapons away from us because... He is failing to commit genocide of the entire country, you know, uh, over there, you know, and is instead rebuilding it instead of just, as you said, wiping them all out. Uh, you would prefer, if he, now, if he were committing genocide, he'd be your guy, right? Am I getting that right? If he was committing genocide, I would be in total fear of him to take away our weapons, yeah. But because he's not committing genocide, he's a pussy, and 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 won't tell the military to come uh, uh, take your weapons. Exactly because that he lets our military die all across seas, teaching people how to rebuild their country instead of being able to fight back. Okay, going back to my earlier question uh, about the prescription medication. Uh, you need to see a doctor, okay? Um, you, 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 you need to be on some I don't, I'm not a doctor. I don't know what kind of prescription medication, but I would, I, the doctor I would choose would be a psychiatrist, okay? Not like a podiatrist or, a, or an endocrinologist or so. I would start with psychiatrist as a specialty. Actually, I've been to several psychologists. For therapy, they haven't found anything wrong with me. I've been psychologically evaluated before and my exiting of the military, and I'm completely fine in the head. So the government tells you you're not crazy. Is, is that right? Okay. Uh, I'm just saying, I would get a second opinion. I'm just saying. Or, you know. I had a reason. I Caesar, I Caesar. I don't know how to say your name, but um, the reason why they sent me over there is to check for PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder, as well as check for anything else. It's a standard procedure for when you're going in as well to get a psyche valve during METS, which is military process enlistment processing service, which basically. You go in, you get a psyche valve, you get a physical, and they do all that shit. Yeah, you have the MEPS, and then you have your exiting where they check and see if you're all oh, whoop de do. And plus, there's behavioral management on base as well, where you can definitely see if you're fucked up or not. And the behavioral management is really, which is known as BAH. Don't quote me on it. I'm pretty sure it's the last time I've seen it. It was called that in the Army. That that makes sure that you're all right, that you're still intact. No, it's really weird. I thought it the same thing when they told me it. It's behavioral... It's something... Behavioral something health. Basically, when a soldier fucks up, it, before they go out of the United States Army... They have to go to the VA. I'm a hot dog. I'm a hot dog. I'm a hot dog. Look at me. Look at me. I'm a hot dog. I'm a hot dog. I'm a hot dog. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me.
everybody party. Look at me, look at me, look at, look at, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm a hot dog. That one was actually by accident. I forgot it was in the playlist, but uh, <laughs> accidental hot dog. Yeah, accidental hot dog. Well, folks, I think that's where I'm going to end it for tonight. It took another chunk out of it. I had no idea what was on there. It was, was so crazy. The more I listen, the more I remember. But I, I couldn't remember if it was all in one. Uh, that, that's what I was telling you before we went live. Was I'm pretty sure this was Stickham because I remember the fucking Hitler's head on the moon and uh, right, right, yeah. <laughs> all that shit. Yeah, you guys were in Stickham and he was broadcasting on blog. That's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. But we uh we gave him a, again. I I was just <laughs> Doctor Descent is such a wild animal, man. You give him just a little bit, and he turns it into pack. What what did he call them? Uh, Pakistanians. <laughs> Pakistani. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. Uh, oh, crazy, crazy. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, I guess tomorrow I'm gonna move. I think I made the decision. I'm gonna move the year end thing to uh, Wednesday night, so tomorrow night, because I have obligations Thursday. So we will be announcing the official winner of the Golden Lulz Cow. Isn't that wow. a beauty? Well, can you give us a hint? Can you give us Can you give us which way you're leaning? I understand it may change. But where what are you, you leaning? Well, it's like, well, listen, we talked about it yesterday. That was the stream yesterday, and we give people a chance to voice their opinions. Now, I have seen in comments on Discord, and now, first of all, in MeWe, and people have cited the MeWe poll. Now, first of all, the MeWe poll is always going to be skewed to Von Helton every year, no matter what. Like That's not a surprise that he's like 20 votes ahead or something to win Golden Walls Cow, right? Right. I don't right. know. There's been some good output. I mean, he's consistently lulzy, generally. Uh it's tight. It's tight, but I'm still leaning Revan Shanty. I, I think point. I agree with you. I think I and again, I to me personally, I it it really is a toss up because there's been a lot of stuff with Vaughn this year too. And Rev and Shanty, while they do have huge earmarks, they have long stretches where they're just awful. They're just boring. But yeah. but yeah. then again, they had some tight months this year. They really did. They had weeks long weeping sessions. People went to jail. Children were kicked. I mean, come on. They're kicked homeless, literally. Vaughn homeless? was almost homeless and then right. pulled a, you know. He pulled a fucking 180 on that one. But then, but they literally went homeless, then got evicted again. Double and then before addiction. they got evicted, they made the news because the place got friggin' the fire department comes in. It's like, no, someone's been stealing the copper. If <laughs> <laughs> the fucking basement's flooded with fuel. Oh, man. man. And he and got on the news. He got, he got on the yeah. fucking news. Man. Again, two years in a row. That's what champions again. do. Yeah, it was just it, like I mean, come on. I, like I said, I mean, it, you know, if, if if something sways you and you decide Vaughn, I'm with. I'm not upset about it, but I do think Rev and Shanny, even though it's close, I agree with you. I think that they they pull it out. Yeah, you know, and, and, and it, it, it's not a reward. I mean, they're not winning anything. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's well, not, <laughs> it is. I would argue. I, mean, I that think it's it has, prestigious. You it know? has a pedigree. I think that comes along <laughs> right. with it. Is, and a two time and not not just it's a it's a it's a it's a repeat. So it's consecutive. Yeah. That's also very prestigious. Well that's a history making event right there, really, if that happens that way. But look, and some people I know some people vote out of spite of just the, the way they vote anything, right? They just hate the other person so much they'll vote for the opposition. And that's fine. I think that's valid in this type of competition. And but don't get me wrong, folks, there is nothing more than I would love. Than to send a package to Von Helton telling them he's like the biggest. I mean, it's gonna happen, right? It's if gonna I was happen. giving the giving the biggest scumbag award or something, he'd yeah. get it hands down every the year. The lowest time achievement award. Yeah, I mean, uh, long time grazer, right? That is fucking retirement plaque or whatever. But uh, maybe maybe that's something we can do in the future. And but I Rev, just, I gotta... Rev is already smoking those fucking cigs. Oh he's yeah, already smoking them. Well, Shani said she's already working on the uh, speech, the acceptance speech. So. But don't count your chickens before they hatch because we don't know. Anything could happen. Right? Anything could happen. Just the right, right body cam the footage year, could drop. or You know, and last year wasn't even close. There was no even discussion about Vaughn was boring as hell. Emo was like he was this year, just removed from the situation entirely. Last year, they won it halfway through the year. It was, yeah. it was a done deal. This mm -hmm. year, it's way closer. 
Oh yeah, it's way it's neck and neck. It's a. Tight. That's all you really want is a good game. You know, you, no one wants to watch a blowout. It's not exciting. At least it's a good game. I mean, yeah. we're talking overtime here. This could this is in overtime right now. Yeah, well, Shanny could you know cramp up and get a Charlie horse, and Von Helton could get a second wind and pull ahead. Don't ever. One thing I've learned about Von: don't ever us underestimate his ability to find a new rock bottom. Just like when you think fail has already, you know. Oh, there's it's bottomless. Paid how many its fucking times, cold visit. How many times have we thought oh, this is this is as bad as it'll ever get? Only yeah. for three shovels and a backhoe to roll up in that motherfucker. How many yeah. times? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it knows no bound. There's no end to his fail. So he's not out of the race yet. Anything could happen. There's what? Listen, folks, it's all kinds of shit that could happen. But uh, that's where well, my head is. I will definitely be there. I, I'm excited. All right, folks, I'm going to shut her down. Uh, go home. Peace. Peace. <laughs>